Ban in a Box 2021 for Windows is here. We've been busy and added over 80 new features and an amazing collection of new content, including 202 real tracks, new MIDI super tracks, instrumental studies, artist performances, bonus real drum singles, real drums transcriptions now for all real drums, multi styles pack one, extra styles pack 10, and more. We also have bonus packs with 40 real tracks in addition to the 202 new real tracks. So in total, an amazing 242 new real tracks are available. In addition, there are over 300 new real styles that use the new real tracks. These include great fusion, smooth jazz and blues with Nashville great Brent Mason, swing shuffle vocals, modern jazz and electronic funk with Jeff Lorber, slack key guitar with Brent Mason, world music styles such as African Nanigo, Cuban Cascara, and Brazilian Partido Alto, classic guitar styles such as Dublin Pop and 90s Grunge, indie folk rock and 60s Coffee House, new reggae reel tracks, cool new lap steel, and old time mandolins, banjos, and fiddles. There are over 80 new features in Down in a Box 2021. We've added 16 new editable utility tracks, which can be used for audio and MIDI. The mixer has been improved with many customizable display options, including embedded window and portrait court sheet mode, track selection to display, and more. Mute and solo can now be saved or loaded with songs. You can now view audio waveforms on any track, not just the audio track. And you can copy regions of audio to utility tracks. Plugin control has been improved with the ability to send each MIDI track to output to another track. Multiple plugins GUI windows can be displayed. Audio harmonies can be generated onto individual tracks, giving you more control over them. There's a new option to auto fix sour notes within the polyphonic audio, either for generated real tracks or with any audio. 24-bit audio playback, recording, mixing, and rendering is now supported in Banana Box. The chord sheet has been improved with new zoom buttons and time signature display on the part markers. And now all real drums have real charts with accurate drum notation and MIDI which can trigger drum patches. There are notation enhancements including 2-2 cut time and 2-4 display. And there is now a visual transpose indicator on the main screen. Chords can be copied as a simple text format and then be pasted into another song or a text file. There are also great new features in the Banana Box DAW plugin. The DAW plugin is included with any purchase of Banana Box and allows you to use many of the great features of Banana Box right in your favorite DAW, such as Cakewalk, Reaper, Pro Tools, Personas, and many more. There are two new very useful views in addition to the original track and chords view. Track table only, or chord sheet only. There's also a feature that automatically generates the entire chord chart as markers in a MIDI file, which can be dragged into the DAW. And there are lots of other useful features like displaying multiple chord types, changing audio output channels, and more. We'll check out these new features and more for both the main program and the DAW plugin later in the video. But for now, let's check out some of the excellent new reel tracks in Banana Box 2021. Right now we're listening to one of our new Reel Styles featuring two new indie rock guitar styles from Reel Track's favorite Brent Mason. This soloist. And this rhythm style. If you're new to Band in a Box, I'll give you a brief introduction. Band in a Box is an auto accompaniment program that allows you to type in any chord progression in any key and it generates backing tracks for you. This is an amazing tool for practicing, songwriting, composing, teaching and music production. And that's what you're hearing right now. Everything you're hearing here was created simply by typing in these chords, picking this style, setting the tempo and pressing play. Band in a Box then did everything, and you can enter any chord progression in any key. I'll highlight this by making a couple of changes to this chord chart. I'll completely change the chords in the first eight bars. I'll change the first chord to the one major chord, D. I'll change bar two to the flat seven chord, C. 
I'll leave bars three and four. I'll make the same changes to bars five and six. And I'll enter E minor seven flat five in bar seven and A7 in bar eight. I'll change the key of the whole song to E and press play. And you can see that it's playing our new progression in a completely different key and it still sounds fantastic. Let's have a look at some of the other amazing new content in Ban in a Box 2021. For jazz, blues, funk, and Latin, we've got even more styles featuring Brent Mason, including new fusion and smooth jazz soloing. And low down blues. And there are styles in this set which also feature cool new guitar effects that have never previously been in Van in a Box such as a rotary effect that gives the guitar a sound similar to a vintage organ. We've also expanded our Jazz Essentials Reel Tracks, with a set focusing on reel tracks that work very well over jazz minor blues progressions. slack key guitar styles from Brent Mason which feature a distinctly Hawaiian sound. There are new world music styles such as Partido Alto, African Naniko Cuban Cascara and more There are new age piano styles with Miles Black And new styles from fusion legend Jeff Lorber which include new funky synth basses and vintage electronic drums. We have some amazing new pop rock and world styles. We've added to our user requested classic rock guitar styles with a set of Dublin pop, which emulates the guitar sounds that came out of Ireland in the 80s and 90s. as well as a trip to Seattle with 90s grunge. There are user requested reggae styles. More steel drum and marimba. We have a set of 60s coffee house folk styles with guitar and a real tracks first, Dulcimer. There are new gospel shout reel tracks perfect for a rousing church service. and more of our extremely popular cinematic electric guitar styles. For country, Americana and Celtic, we've added to our collection of vocal reel tracks with a set of swinging shuffle vocals.
We've added to our country poll winner reel track with Academy of Country Music Award winners, including Danny Rader on guitar, Miles McPherson on Nashville pop drums, and Fred Eltrington playing Americana drums. And of course, this also includes Real Track's favorite, Brent Mason, who has won the CMA Guitarist of the Year Award numerous times. There is a set of old-time music featuring mandolins, fiddles, guitars, and banjo guitars, or ganjos. And there are exciting new lap steel styles with Nashville great Eddie Dunlap. Now let's have a detailed look at the new features of the program itself. I'm first going to talk about the GUI, or Graphical User Interface. Basically the first thing you see when you open the program. For those of you familiar with Ban in a Box, you'll see some pretty major improvements. The mixer can be embedded in the main screen, turning the chord sheet into portrait mode. And the mixer is horizontally resizable to allow more room for the chord sheet. I have it embedded here, but of course you can still have it as a floating window by pressing this button. When it's in floating mode, the mixer now can size down to be way smaller than was previously allowed. At its very smallest, it still retains some very useful functions, like displaying the master VU meter and also giving you the master control for this song or all songs. And as you increase the size, the sliders for the individual tracks start to appear. And then the full labels start to appear. In the classic screen mode, the mixer can be embedded at the top right of the screen. Or you can press this button to view mixer options. And you can view the mixer in the bottom right area. Portrait mode also can be used when viewing other screens like piano roll, notation, or audio edit window, which incidentally is now able to show waveforms for all tracks, including real tracks and real drums, where previously it was only able to display audio on the audio track. Which highlights another great new feature, which is that this audio window and the other windows like Piano Roll and Notation will change the tracks they're displaying when you click on the tracks in the mixer. You can choose to either only show active tracks or you can choose to show all tracks. And there are 16 new utility tracks which can be used for audio, MIDI, or both. I'll get into more detail about these very useful new tracks a little later. The height of these tracks can be adjusted by holding the control button down and using the scroll wheel. And if your current view means that some tracks are hidden, you can use the scroll wheel without the control button held down to scroll through the list of tracks. Or you can use these buttons to scroll. And the scroll wheel has other uses in the mixer as well. If your mouse is hovering over any of the sliders, the scroll wheel function changes so that it's now controlling that element. If you hold shift while scrolling over one of these elements, it affects that element for all of the tracks, but preserves the starting point of each track, maintaining the difference between the tracks. If you hold control while scrolling over one of these elements, it snaps them all to the same value and then adjusts them all from that starting point. Another thing you may have noticed while I was doing that was that the tracks are displaying for me in decibels, whereas in previous versions they would display the volume and pan in terms of MIDI values of 1 to 127, with 90 being flat. This now makes a lot more sense, particularly if you're mostly dealing with real tracks, real drums, and audio tracks. But if you prefer the old way, you can still display using those values 
by selecting that in the mixer options. But for me, I think I'd prefer to leave it as decibels. You can also do it on a track by track basis. In addition to the only active or all tracks views that I showed earlier, you can also customize this by selecting only active, but then you can add tracks individually from the list. There's also an option to always hide all unused tracks when playback starts. One other new feature is that you can have Band in a Box save and load the solo and mute states in the mixer. If I have load, mute, and solo states with songs selected, then if I mute a couple of tracks, and I save the song. First of all, if I press New, all of the mute and solo will be off. And if I load that same song, it's preserved my mute and solo states. Most DAWs do work this way, and so this has long been a requested feature. However, Band in a Box is often used in a very different way. For example, if you're a bass player practicing along with Band in a Box tracks, you may want to mute the bass track and then play through a whole folder of tunes. And you'll want to keep the Band in a Box bass muted regardless of what mute or solo states are or aren't saved in the songs, in which case this setting can be turned off so Band in a Box will work the same way it always has. Another great thing about the embedded mixer is that if you make your track small enough, the space here can be utilized for a variety of purposes. Again, if you were a bass player, you could now arrange the screen so that you could have the bass fretboard display here and open a floating notation window, which could be put here. And now you can work your way through a whole folder full of songs, viewing the chords, fretboard, and notation with tab with the bass muted so you can play the bass part. In addition to the portrait mode that you get with the embedded mixer, there are also other improvements to the main chord sheet. Previously, if you wanted to change the number of lines per page or the number of bars per line, you would need to go into the display options and change the values here. But now there are new, much easier ways to do this. If you hold down control, the mouse scroll wheel changes the number of lines per page instantly. And holding shift while you mouse scroll changes the number of bars per line. And these tasks can also be accomplished by using these buttons in the bottom right area of the chord sheet. Both of these are extremely useful. For myself, I find I change these settings frequently, mostly depending on how dense the chords are. That is, if there are lots of chords, I'm more inclined to view four bars per line. But if they're more sparse, I'm more inclined to view eight bars per line. The main time signature now appears on the main chord chart and appears on the chord chart for bars with time signature changes set in the bar settings dialog. The default action can be set in the display preferences. And now the visual transpose is also settable right from the main screen. If I mouse over the key of the song, if I move to the right of the key, a separate area becomes apparent. If I click there, that lets me now choose visual transpose. Since this tune has a tenor sax solo, if a tenor player were learning this, the chords and notation would need to be visually transposed. I could just pick tenor sax. Now there's a plus 14 indication right beside the key, and the chords displayed are showing it in E minor instead of D minor. And of course it's displaying that way in notation as well. The visual transpose can also be viewed and set within the notation view as well. 
We're now going to take a closer look at the utility tracks that we touched on earlier. There are several different ways you can use the utility tracks. You can record audio to them. You can record MIDI to them. You can copy Realtrack's audio as well as the MIDI reel charts to the utility tracks, where you'll then be able to hear and edit the Realtrack's audio and view and edit the reel charts MIDI. You can copy just audio from the reel tracks or reel drums to them for further editing. You can copy MIDI to these utility tracks for playback and editing. You can copy just regions of MIDI or audio to them. And you can generate harmonies from audio tracks, including reel tracks, and send those separated harmonies to the utility tracks. So to start, we're going to look at recording audio to utility tracks. This process is very similar to how you could previously record audio to the audio track, but now you can record 16 additional tracks beyond that single audio track. So I have one of the new artist performances loaded, featuring flautist Jeff Kelly and violinist Daniel Lapp performing the traditional Irish tune Kesh Jig. And I'd like to record my own additional track onto that just for fun. So I'm going to press the record button. First, I'm going to open the audio settings and look at the audio driver. My interface is listed here. And now here's some important information. My interface supports 24-bit recording, and Band in a Box 2021 now supports 24-bit recording, playback, mixing, and rendering. So what I'm about to record here will be in 24-bit audio, and when I play it back afterwards, I'll be hearing 24-bit quality sound, and when I render the final thing down to an audio mix, I will not have lost any of the sound quality from the original recording. And here I'm going to set the track I'll be recording to, and I'll select Utility Track 1. I'll just play a little bit to see what my levels are like in the VU meter. If I needed to adjust levels, that could be done by pressing the Set Recording Levels button, or in my case, I would just set them manually on my interface. But the levels in the VU meter already look pretty good. And now I'll go ahead and record. Now that it's stopped, we can see that Utility Track 1 now appears orange, indicating that it has audio on it. I'll play a little bit back. And now when I'm ready to render a mix, I can save it as a 24-bit file. And 24-bit is now the default here. Incidentally, there are also other new features here in the render dialog. For starters, rendering is simply faster now. This setting ensures that the highest quality tempo stretching setting for Elastique will be used when rendering. You may be using a lower quality setting for playback in order to increase performance, but this is not necessary when rendering to an audio file. If we wanted renders of the individual tracks, there's now an option to have them flat, dry, and center. This means that any panning, reverb, and tone in the mixer would be ignored for the individual tracks. The volumes would also be set to 0 dB, or 90 if you're using the old display method. In addition to that, during playback, all reel tracks get an additional decibel offset under the hood to make them be balanced with all other reel tracks and MIDI tracks during playback. This setting removes that for rendering the stems as well. The idea here is that rendering individual tracks is likely done to bring them into a DAW, and in most cases you'll be wanting to do the actual mixing there. This feature then gives you the completely unaltered audio exactly as if you recorded it into the DAW itself. So now I'll render. And the entire process of recording through to rendering has been done in 24-bit. Another way to use utility tracks is to copy parts or entire tracks of Realtrack's audio and MIDI over to utility tracks, where it can be further edited. I have a song loaded up with one of our new reel styles, Butter Smooth Fusion Soloist, which features a Brent Mason soloist reel track playing along with some smooth jazz reel tracks. I 
typed in a chord progression, and now I'd like to experiment with adding a whole bunch of tracks. Maybe even some real tracks you wouldn't think would fit over this. Before I even get started, right now this is Untitled Song, and I'd like to give it a working title. For those of you familiar with Band in a Box, you'll know that there is a song title generator in Band in a Box. But now there's a hotkey that lets you generate song titles quickly and easily, so you can just keep clicking until you hit on one you like. It's Alt-Shift-T, so I'll just keep pressing that until I find a working title I like. And I think I'll stick with that one. I'd like to add several additional tracks. There are a couple of percussion singles in the Band in a Box 2021 Bonus 49 pack that I'd like to add to this song. I can add them to the drums track using the multi-drums feature, but I want to have more control over them separately, so I'm going to put them on some of the available Band in a Box tracks here. One is an African Udo hand drum, so I'm filtering by Udo and selecting this one. Now I'm going to add another one on the melody track, and the other is a DAF hand drum. So I'm selecting this one for the melody track. There are also singles that came with Real Track Set 356, Modern Jazz and Funk with Jeff Lorber. In this set there are funky synth basses and vintage electronic drums, and the electronic drums also came with the single elements that made them up. So I'm going to find an electronic clap sound to add to this. I'll pick the slow one, and it looks like there's an option for the clap on beat 4 or beats 2 and 4, so I'll pick 2 and 4. I'll now regenerate. So now I've got some additional cool percussion on this file. But I'd like to do even more experimenting with real tracks, so what I'm going to do is copy all three of these to utility tracks to free up these spaces for even more real tracks options. I'll use the new feature in Copy Move Track to be able to move audio from one track to another. I'll copy Drums 2 to the audio track. Drums 3 to Utility 1 and Drums 4 to Utility 2. That in turn now frees up these three tracks for me to try out even more additional real tracks here. There are new minimal hip hop real tracks and real drums, so I think I'd like to try out a couple of these. I'll pick the Ghost Pads. and the distorted voice. And on the soloist, maybe I'll try out some vocal mmms. I'll generate a gain. Now I have this great genre crossing ensemble. And I'm going to even do something else with more utility tracks. I'm going to take this guitar solo and harmonize it. I'm going to do two harmony voices, one above, one below. And I'm going to put those harmony voices on utility tracks three and four. I'll rename them along with all the other tracks. And I'll check out the whole thing. Since I now have all of these audio tracks that I've put onto the utility tracks, this is a good time to show you some improvements to the audio edit window itself. 
The scroll wheel on the mouse can be used to zoom in or out of the waveform. It's been able to do this in previous versions as well, but up until now there was only one option for the type of zooming. That is, wherever your mouse is currently located, that's where the focal point of the zoom was. However, now there's an additional option where it can zoom into the current location of the cursor instead. So now if I click over here, but I move my mouse over here and then I start to zoom in and out, it's zooming to that location rather than the location of the mouse. Many other DAWs work this way and so if that's what you're used to using, you'd probably prefer to set it this way. There's also an option, if you've selected this, that when zooming it will snap the current location of the cursor to the center. So again, the cursor's there, but if I move my mouse over here and start to zoom, it snaps that location to the center. Again, these are all mostly to do with what you're used to, so you can set it to whatever is most comfortable for you. There are now cut and copy commands in the edit menu. And of course, you can also just use the standard hotkeys, Control c to copy, or Control x to cut. And then I'll switch to a new utility track, Control v to paste. That button I used up there is the Track Selector button, and you can click on it to get a list of all the tracks, and you can select the one you want to view. But you also don't even have to click on it. If you move your mouse over it, then you can use the scroll wheel to scroll through the tracks. And of course, as we saw earlier, you can also just click on the tracks themselves in the mixer to select those different tracks in the audio edit window. All of these things go for the other similar views such as notation and piano roll. And there are useful new hotkeys available in the audio edit window. The home and end buttons now have intuitive functions in the audio edit window. Home will move the cursor to the beginning of the track and end will move the cursor to the end of the track. If you've got a region selected, Shift Home will move the left edge of that region to the beginning. And the reverse is then of course true with Shift End. And if you just have the cursor in the middle with no region selected, Shift Home and Shift End will create regions based on the location of the initial cursor. And of course, Control A will select the whole track. Here too is a little explanation of exactly where the audio files that make up these utility tracks are located. To recap, in putting together this file, I copied a percussion track to the audio track, then two more percussion tracks to utility one and two, then I added the guitar harmonies to utility three and four, and then in that last little section I demonstrated copying a short region by copying a little bit of audio to utility track 14. So I've saved my song to BB songs, my songs, smooth jazz solos with multiple tracks final, that's the folder, and then I've saved it with this title, smooth jazz soloist with multiple tracks.sgu. If I now look at that folder in Windows Explorer, the audio track is saved the same way as it has been in previous versions of Ban in a Box, with the exact name of the Ban in a Box file, but .wav instead of .sgu or .mgu. The utility tracks work in a similar way, with exactly the same names, but number one, number two, etc. And if we recall, audio, utility one and utility two are percussion, three and four, are the guitar harmonies, and 14 was that little chunk of copied audio. One thing I did here is I saved my song to a subfolder specifically for this project. That's just a way to keep your files organized. You certainly can keep all of your Band in a Box files in a single folder, but if you're using these utility tracks for audio, the folder could get a bit messy. That now leads me to the last thing I wanted to show you about how to use utility tracks, and that's using them for MIDI. MIDI has two basic functions in Band in a Box, playback and display. When you're using a real track, you're hearing actual recorded audio of the real instrument. There's corresponding MIDI that is in sync with the audio, but it's not generating the sound. In these cases, the purpose of the MIDI is merely to display in notation, fretboard, etc., the notes that are being played in the corresponding audio. For this guitar solo, we're hearing audio, the great
great amp tone and the great sound of a real guitar being played by an excellent musician. But we can also view the notes that are being played on the guitar fretboard and in notation, and that's because there is corresponding MIDI synced up to the audio, and the MIDI's only purpose in this case is for display purposes. But of course, MIDI can be played, and I've put a MIDI Supertracks strings part in this song as well. And so in that case, the MIDI there is being heard. And it can also be viewed in notation, but for this track, that MIDI is actually what is triggering the synth, and that's what we're hearing. I wanted to explain all of this because with the new utility tracks, you can use MIDI on these tracks in both of these ways as well. If a utility track contains both audio and MIDI, the audio is audible, and the MIDI is for display purposes only. If a utility track contains only MIDI, then the MIDI is audible. And I'll demonstrate that now. This guitar soloist is one of our new Country Pole Winner Reel tracks. We made this reel track with Nashville musician Danny Rader, who is a first call session player in Nashville and has recently won the ACM, or Academy of Country Music, Guitarist of the Year Award. So I'm going to copy this guitar to one of the utility tracks. I'll make sure Guitar 1 is the source, and Utility 1 will be the destination, and I'm going to select MIDI and Audio. So now I'll solo that utility track and we can hear the audio and see it in the audio edit window. But it also still shows up on the fretboard and in notation. Now, in the audio edit window, in the settings, there's an item, Synchronize, Insert, Delete, Edits with MIDI on Track. If this is checked, if I delete a chunk of audio here, the MIDI gets moved so that it still matches up with the track. The chunk I deleted was at bar 9, so let's look at the notation starting from bar 8. Everything after bar 9 is still in sync. But I'll undo that so it still matches up with the actual song here. So this is an example of having both MIDI and audio on a utility track, with the audio audible and the MIDI silent but viewable. I'll now show you an example of playing MIDI on a utility track. This underlying MIDI for the guitar track is intended just for viewing, but you can actually listen to the MIDI if you wanted to by putting the MIDI on a utility track by itself. I'll do that now. I'll copy guitar now to utility track 2, but for audio I'll select do nothing. So now we have a playable track. I'll add a synth to it. I'll pick one of our high Q sounds. Just for fun, I'll pick our electro tape synth patch. This sound is based on the tape based synthesizers popular in the 60s and has a cool sound. So now we have that part being played with this synth. And I can mix it in with the original guitar with just a little bit of that synth in the mix to basically be just kind of a cool effect shimmering over the top of the mix. And now I want to look a little bit at the drums here. The drummer here is another one of our country pole winner Real Tracks artists, Miles McPherson, who is also an ACM award winner and has played with the likes of Kelly Clarkson, Reba McIntyre, and more. With Real Band 2021, we've added over 300 transcriptions for the Real Drums, meaning that now all Real Drums and Band in a Box have Real Charts. And these real charts are the same as the charts for the real tracks. The intention for them is to be used for display purposes. However, you can use the underlying MIDI to actually trigger sounds if you want to. So I'll do the same thing with this that I did with the guitar. Copy it to a utility track. I'll set source to drums and destination to utility three. But only the MIDI. Thank you. 
And now we're hearing MIDI drums created from the reel chart, along with these other reel tracks. And using this as a starting point, you can get even more creative. I'm going to go into the piano roll window. I'm going to click on this note, which on the drum track is the snare. So that is highlighted only the snare notes. And I'm going to go Control C to copy. I'm now going to go to another utility track where I'm going to paste that. Because the first note wasn't at the beginning, it's pasted a little out of sync, but that's easy to fix. And I can go back and forth between the two tracks to easily see that it's now more or less lined up perfectly. Incidentally, there's a new checkbox in the piano roll window, Auto Vertical Scroll. Previously, this was always on with no option to turn it off, and it would automatically set the vertical height of the notes based on the range of the notes on the track, which was a useful feature in many cases. But it meant that comparing two tracks that were mostly the same was difficult because you'd be switching from different views. With the ability to turn that off, now I can switch back and forth between these two tracks for an easy compare. So the point of this was that I wanted just the snare on a track of its own. I could then use this to, for example, trigger an electronic snare sound, which could play in sync with the real drums. We had a look at some new features in the notation window, but I'm going to delve a little more deeply into all of the new notation features. Right now we're looking at the old Stephen Foster tune, Old Folks at Home, using a style from one of our new reel track sets, Pyre Old Timey Folk. This is a bluegrass groove with bass, mandolins, acoustic guitar, and fiddle. And right now we're looking at the notation for the fiddle part. There are new improvements to the time signature button. There's a new hint when you mouse over the button with clear information about what you can do with this menu. In previous versions, the time signature button was only for the visual display, but didn't include any options for changing the actual time signature of your song. Coming to this time signature button therefore could previously be confusing, because if you came here expecting to actually change, for example, a 4-4 bar to 3-4 or 7-4, you couldn't do that and you'd have to know to go to the F5 bar settings dialog. Now you can, and I'll show you an example of that a little later. Right now though I'd like to focus on this upper area which doesn't actually change the music you're hearing, but changes the way it's displayed. The area now has a lot more information about what these changes are, and it's added two new options, 2-4 and cut time. Cut time would be very useful for the song we're looking at right now. It's 16th based, and you'd count it as 1, 2, 3, 4, with each of those quarter notes being broken into 16th note subdivisions. However, when you see bluegrass and Celtic music written out, it quite often treats each of these notes as 8th notes. In the past, the way to get these notes to display like that would be to use all of the reel tracks as halftime reel tracks. However, there's now a much easier way to get this view, and that's simply to select Cut Time. Now we're seeing this, and what were previously 16th notes are now 8th notes. The time signature displays with a better size. The height of the time signature fills the whole height of the staff. This song is a good example of where 2-4 would be an appropriate time signature to use, so I'll select that. Again, it doesn't adjust what you're hearing at all, but in this case, it doesn't change 16ths to 8ths, but it puts an extra bar line in at, at beat 3. So without changing the MIDI or how the reel tracks are arranged, it's displaying in 2-4 without changing the music at all. Incidentally, there's another new feature where pushes now work a lot better for swing 8ths reel drums, like this Gypsy Jazz Swing. I'm going to return to our Old Folks at Home song to show some improvements to the lyrics features. There are two types of lyrics in Band in a Box, note-based and bar-based lyrics. Note-based lyrics like these have each syllable of the lyrics attached to notes on the melody track, 
This is useful in that when you're viewing the lyrics in the big lyrics window, the syllables show up at exactly the right time. Bar-based lyrics work by having chunks of lyrics attached to each bar of the song. And here I've replaced the note-based lyrics with bar-based lyrics. The benefit of bar-based lyrics is that they're much easier to enter in Band in a Box, and you can even copy and paste in whole songs as long as the text is organized correctly. Another benefit is that it appears in both the notation window and can display in the main chord chart if the lyric layer is activated. The one downside previously has been that bar-based lyrics did not appear in the big lyrics window, but a new feature now has bar-based lyrics displaying here. And as promised earlier, I'll show you how to actually change the time signature of the music you're hearing. I've got one of our new grunge style demos loaded with three new grunge guitars. And I want to make this a little more sophisticated, so I want the first 16 bars to be 7-4 instead of 4-4. And I'm going to use the new menu items in the notation window. This is something you could do previously, but with these new menu items this is made a lot more intuitive. This item would bring up the bar settings dialog, but this one actually lets you pick a time signature, so I'll select that. So starting at bar 1, I want it to last 16 bars, and I'll pick 7-4. So you can see what it's done to get 7-4 is just alternate bars of 4-4 with bars of 3-4. There are many improvements to the real tracks and real drums. A very exciting new feature is the ability to auto-fix sour notes within a polyphonic real tracks part. This means that if a chord is played with multiple notes at once, this feature can fix just certain notes within that chord, so that the notes won't clash with the chord progression and other real tracks. This is a setting that you can apply to any real track, and it will be a blanket setting for the whole track. Right now I've got a demo for a new reel style that features one of our new 90s jam rock acoustic guitars, and it also contains one of the oldest reel tracks. Pedal Steel Background Even 85 was one of the three first reel tracks we ever released. This pedal steel and others like it work great over pop and country changes, but sometimes don't play the best material over the more uncommon chords like augmented or diminished chords. I'll show you what I mean by changing the chord at bar 7 to a C-sharp augmented chord. I'll press play to generate, and I'll also open the piano window so we can see the notes being played. So the notes of a C-sharp augmented chord are C-sharp, F, and A, but there was a G-sharp note in there that definitely clashes with the chord. So I'm going to go to the mixer, track settings, auto fix sour notes, and there are some options here. Song chords would force all notes to be only notes from the current chord. This is a little extreme for what I want here, as there are lots of great passing tones the pedal steel plays and this would cram them all into chord tones. Key signatures may work in some instances, and actually would probably work here to change a G sharp to an A, but the setting I find most useful is song key signature and chords. That way it will still follow the chords if you put in some chords that go even further out of the current key, but generally will allow notes within the current key. The feature also takes key signature changes into account, which is a great feature and an important thing to note when you're putting together your song. If your song actually has key changes, it's worthwhile putting an actual key signature change in the bar settings F5 dialog. There are also other options for specific scales or chords that might not have anything to do with the current song, as well as other specific parameters. But this song, key signatures, and chords I think will be great for this. 
So I'll regenerate. And now it's playing the correct notes over that C-sharp augmented chord. The feature can also be applied to any audio track, including all of the new utility tracks. And in the case of audio tracks, you can apply to a small region at a time. When using it like this, you can use it not even necessarily to fix sour notes, but just to make certain regions of audio conform more closely to the chord progression. For example, I have a song loaded here, and the lap steel that was on the Guitar 1 track I've copied to Utility Track 1. I've got that original lap steel frozen on that track, so at any point I have access to the unaltered file there. I'll just play the first few bars. So there at bar 6, it's playing a really nice lick, and it plays an F-sharp at beat 4 of bar 6, which anticipates the F-sharp minor chord that comes at bar 7. This is a tasty little phrase, but maybe you're writing a vocal line to go along with this, and you're finding that having that anticipation conflicts with the vocal melody line you've been trying out. Well, I can then force this to follow the chord progression exactly. I'll highlight that entire bar. I'll go to the Edit menu and select Fix Sour Notes. And this time I'll force it to only play chord tones because if I was allowing it to follow the key signature, that F sharp would actually be fine. And now I've forced it to play only chord tones from A major for the full duration of the bar. So you can see that using these utility tracks is a great way to take real tracks parts and fine tune them to get them exactly as you want them. There are a few other useful new features related to real tracks. There is a new feature that now allows medleys that have a mixture of mono and stereo real tracks to work with panning settings, which was not previously allowed. For example, I've put a piano, which is stereo, along with this acoustic guitar, which is mono, together in a medley on the same track playing simultaneously, and they're panned largely left and right. There are new options for avoiding transposition of real tracks. When real tracks are generated, some of the material you hear may not have been recorded in the same key you're hearing it at it may have been transposed from what was originally recorded. Now, while it's not always possible to avoid this, there has long been a setting in Band in a Box that allows you to set the current song to avoid transposition where possible. So you can get the best possible audio quality, though this does mean less variation within the individual reel tracks. There are now new settings that allow you to specify this for particular tracks. as well as a global setting in Preferences, Overrides. The plug-in control on the mixer is also now improved. Right now I've got a new all MIDI style loaded. There are lots of new MIDI styles available for Band in a Box 2021, including two more sets of Look Mom More MIDI, as well as all MIDI styles to go along with our new MIDI Super Tracks. And it's one of these styles we're listening to right now. This New Orleans style features two new MIDI Super Tracks, and then three tracks using the classic Band in a Box MIDI style patterns. The plug-in tab of the mixer now looks way better. In Band in a Box 2020 and earlier, the plugins were kind of crammed together in an awkward way. 
but now the different slots for the four available plugins for each track are now more clearly delineated and just look better and more intuitive. Looking at the mixer here, we can see that for three of the tracks, I'm using Plog Arts for Sando to use our high Q sounds. You can now open plugin windows by right clicking on the plugin slot. So I'll look at the piano. And you can now view multiple plugin GUI windows. So I'll check out the bass as well. For the guitar, I'm just using the default Coyote Wavetable. And for the brass part, I'm using the TTS-1, which I have installed on this computer. One new very useful feature is that for any track, you can send the output to a different track. For example, I mentioned that the guitar is using the Coyote Wavetable, but I can easily send it to the plugin on the brass track, the TTS-1. So we can see right in the plugin now that both of these tracks are playing through this one synth. You can also force MIDI channels to different channels in this menu as well. I'm going to solo the piano to highlight some additional new features. There's an option to attenuate synth output volume and panning. This changes the gain of the plugin's audio output based on the volume and panning controls on the mixer. When this is enabled, MIDI controllers for volume will not be sent to the plugin. This setting is useful for plugins that do not respond to MIDI controllers, and it also just makes the mixer work for MIDI tracks more the way it works for real tracks and real drums. To show you what this means, I'll turn that off now. You can see that right now when I move the slider, it's making the volume control on the plugin go up and down. That's what's controlling the volume. With attenuate synth output, it instead is just controlling the overall signal from the plugin itself in the mixer. The two other settings below have similar functions. Filter synth output basically lets the tone control in the mixer affect the signal from the plugin. And send synth output to master reverb also means that you'll be able to control reverb for MIDI tracks in the same way you do for real tracks. Another requested feature is that Waves VST plugins are also now supported. There are new options for intros. The feature that automatically generates an intro for your song has been in Band in a Box a long time, and last year we added new options with just drum intros or just drum and bass, or just bass. There are now even more options available, with bass, then bass and drums, or drums, then bass and drums, or any of the other instruments by themselves, or any combination of the available instruments. Right now I've got a demo loaded for a couple of the real tracks in our Classic Guitars Dublin Pop set. This features two of the nine real tracks available in this set. I particularly like this Mag Spacey guitar. For this real track, instead of the guitarist using a pick, he used a magnetic electronic device with the right hand to activate the strings. The result is a cool, otherworldly sound. So I'm going to go into the intros dialog to apply one of these options. Bass, then bass and drums. So we can see it's now given me an intro, and it's used the band in a box shorthand, period, to indicate instruments are all resting, except B here for bass, and then at bars 3 and 4, B, D for bass and drums. I'm now going to try the custom option. And I'll select just drums, synth, and guitar 2. There are also new options for the lead in, that is, the two bars that are usually a drum count in. Previously, this has been a global setting, and it still is, and I have my global setting set to not play count-ins. But now there are new options in song settings for just the current song. So even though I have my global setting set to not play count-ins, I can turn it on for this song only. And I can pick specialized options like A pattern and fill. 
And this whole combo box is actually duplicated in the intro's dialogue as well. So it played a count in, which was really two bars of drums, then our custom intro, and then into the song. There's also a great new feature to copy chords to the clipboard so it can be pasted as text, for example in a text file or email. At its most basic with this function, you can simply press the standard Control c to copy, and Control v to paste into a text file or anywhere else you paste text. And the reverse is true as well. I'll enter completely different chords here in the text file. And I'll copy that. And in Band in a Box, I can either select Paste Special here or just hit Control Shift V. And those chords I entered in the text file are now in Band in a Box. And you don't even need to technically have the chords tags at the beginning and end. You can just type in chords in a text file with the vertical line character used to denote bar lines, and that can be copied into Band in a Box. And this time I'll go Control Shift V. You can even use Nashville numbers and Band in a Box shortcuts. For example, in the text file, I'll type 2H, and H is a shortcut for half diminished, or minor 7 flat 5. Another vertical line, and 5 7, that's the 5 chord, and the 7 means it's a dominant chord. And it gives me D minor 7 flat 5 and G7 in the key of C. In Edit, Copy Special, Copy Songs to Text on Clipboard or Files, there's a dialog with additional options, including copying whole songs with all kinds of additional information, options for what will be included, and there are batch features. The first item is selected, which is why I was able to copy and paste directly from the chord chart earlier. But that could be disabled, and you could still use this feature from within this dialog. There are various options here for just what gets included when copying to the clipboard. These three settings here affect the chords. Percentage sign for repeated chords, space character at the beginning of each bar, new line for new section. These two at the bottom here also affect the chords. Part markers can be included as part of the pasted chord chart, and holds, etc. can be part of the chords too. These two items do not affect the chords, but are separate things that can be included if you're copying the whole song. Song metadata includes things like style name, title, form, etc. And you can also include the song memo. The previous examples I did were all just portions of the chord progression, but now I'm going to copy everything from here and do the whole song. So now we have a whole song entered here with title, file name, key, tempo, and form, the band in a box style and long name, the memo, the song summary, which also appears in the memo dialog, which includes a list of the real tracks and real drums, and then finally the chords, which includes repeats. And if the information is formatted like this, particularly with all the text in the square brackets remaining, you can actually enter songs from scratch in this format as well. So I'm now going to change everything in this text file to make a completely new song, which I'll be able to paste into Band in a Box. The title I'll change to Blues from a text file. The file name is not really relevant for pasting back into Band in a Box key, tempo, and form is, and I'll change that to A minor, 144 beats per minute, and 1 to 12, 5 choruses. The style is relevant, and I'll pick a new style that I know I like, underscore walk-in. 
The style long name is not relevant because that comes from the style itself. But I'll use this to demonstrate that it's certainly not going to be a problem for this to remain. The entire memo I'll change. The summary is not relevant because that's info that is automatically generated in the song. It's not something the user can edit in Ban in a Box. Again, it would be fine to leave it, but I'll just delete it all for cleanliness sake. And now for the chords. I'll just delete everything and enter it from scratch. Each line needs to start with a vertical line character. And I'll enter a minor blues. As long as there's a space between the vertical lines, Ban in a Box will treat that as a whole bar. If there's no space, Ban in a Box will consider that to be a new section. Now, I've been putting a new line every four bars, but actually you don't need to put a new line. You can put as many bars on one line as you like. Uh, and actually, I'll put an extra vertical character here just so you can see that that will put in a new section as well. And I'll go F7, E7, A minor. And actually, I'll make all of these A minors seventh chords. I'll also put a part marker at the start of the file. You put a part marker by typing either A or B. So I'll put A and then in parentheses. I'll also put an ending here. Endings work the same as part markers. You just type end and then a parentheses. And then you can put a chord that will be in the end bar. So now I'll copy all of this to the clipboard and I'll select new here and go edit, paste special from clipboard text to song. Now, when I was previously in this dialog, I just quickly hit okay because I just wanted to copy small chunks of chords. But I'll take a few moments here to just show you what all is in this dialog. This has all of the information that's going to be pasted into the new song. So it's going to be pasting all of the metadata, memo, style information, title, everything that it got from the text that was on the clipboard here. You can paste it as a new song, but I've already hit new, so I, I can just paste it into the current song. I'm gonna do the whole song. I'll look at this feature shortly as well. But for now, I'll just press OK. And now I have this minor blues in Banana Box, which I created entirely in Notepad. And we can compare the title from my text file Key, A minor, tempo, 144, song form, bars 1 to 12, five times, the style is walking, here even is the memo. and the whole chord progression, including the new section I put at bar nine. There are also batch options, both for saving from text as well as saving to text. First of all, in Notepad, I've entered two songs. This one starts here with song in square brackets and ends with song end in square brackets. Then there's a new song and song end. So this is a song and this is a song. I'll copy that entire thing to the clipboard and I'll go to that same dialog. It now shows me that it's found two songs. And one of the options is to save as SGU songs. And I can save all songs in the clipboard I'll save to songs, text to SGU. 
I'll open that folder, and here are my songs. And it's actually opened the second of the two automatically in Band in a Box. The other batch feature is saving to text. If I go back to the Copy Songs to Text dialog, we can see this option to batch save all songs in this folder. I'll pick a different folder, My Songs. Here are some options. First, I want to try saving to all different text files. There's an option to just put the text files in the same folder as the Band in a Box files. I don't want to pick a different folder, so I'll just do the first one. And I'll do the batch. And here they are. And I'll check out a couple of them. But I'll delete these and try having everything in a single text file. Another similar option would be to copy that to the clipboard, but I'll save it as a file. So now it's prompting me to save just a single text file. And here is that file, and let's have a look at it. And now they're all in a single text file. And you can see that each song is identified with song in brackets at the beginning and song end in brackets at the end. There are other MIDI improvements, including enhancements to the MIDI import feature. I'll import violet.mid, which is available in the documentation tutorials folder from the main Band in a Box folder. This import MIDI dialog box is now improved allowing you to send different tracks in the MIDI to different tracks in Band in a Box. For example, utility tracks. It's put a check beside any channels within those tracks that actually have events on them, and if I mouse over them, it shows me the total number of events in those channels. For example, the guitar track has 2,042 events. The strings track has 228 events. Also, continuous controllers and pitch bend previously were lumped together, but you can now separate them, picking one but not the other. I'll press OK to import all of these. And we can now see them on these utility tracks. I'll disable the style and play this. The Copy Move Track dialog, which we looked at earlier for copying audio, also has similar new features for MIDI. Hovering over these channels shows you the number of events on those channels. And there is also the separated continuous controllers and pitch bend options. There are new hotkeys that make entering and editing chords in the chord sheet even easier. There has long been a feature to copy bars using the K command. For example, K4 would copy the last four bars. There are improvements and additions to this kind of editing. Typing KK as if you were entering a chord and enter will open the Copy Chords and Melody dialog, where there are lots of great options for copying. And the settings over here also apply when you use the K command in the chord sheet. So you can change those settings and press Close, which is a new option, without applying any actual copies, but the settings are saved. For example, copy part markers and bar settings is not selected right now, but I could select it and press close without actually applying any changes from that dialog. And now, if I copy the last four bars, it will copy the part marker. KK also has other functions if it's followed by two numbers separated by commas, with the first number being the number of bars you want to copy, and the second being the bar you want to copy from. So for example, if you're in bar 25, and you want to copy four bars starting at bar 9, you can type KK 4 comma 9. Then when that dialog opens, it will open with those settings already in the dialog and you can just press OK. There's also a new hotkey to insert a certain number of bars at the current location. For example, 
I4 would insert four bars at the current location. That command is also added to the right-click menu. And then that can be combined with the K hotkey as well to not just copy a certain number of bars, but to actually insert them without overwriting the existing ones. For example, if I wanted to copy the last four bars here at bar 17, but not overwrite these ones and rather insert them, I could type KI4. And that's inserted those four bars, but pushed the existing four bars further down the chord chart. And that last one we used, KI, if it's followed by two numbers separated by commas, the first number would be the number of bars you want to copy, and the second number would be the location of those bars. So here, if I type KI, eight for eight bars, comma nine, because I want to copy them from bar nine, when I hit enter, it's now copied those bars here. And then finally, there's one more combination. If you type KKI8, that opens the copy chords and melody with the 9 added to the bar number to copy from and the 8 in the number of bars to copy. One final new feature with the copy commands is that copying will now also copy bar lyrics. Earlier in the video, I showed you the Alt-Shift-T to generate new song titles. There are also some other Alt-Shift combinations that have been added to Band in a Box. Alt-Shift-F opens the Favorite Folders dialog. And Alt-Shift-S will save the current song to a Favorite Folder. Favorite Folders are all the most recent folders that you've visited. There are some new features with Styles and the Style Picker. For starters, on the main chord chart, there's a new option to quickly define C and D substyles using the same style. Previously, you could define C and D, pick a new style in the style picker, and then C and D would be substyle options in your song, which would switch to that style. And that's an incredibly useful feature for easy control over style switching in a song. But another use for C and D, and even E and F, etc., is simply for display purposes. If you're writing a song and you've got verses and choruses and you just want another part marker and color to indicate a bridge, you could select this without going in the style picker and then you have access to these part markers, even though they're not actually changing styles. There's an option from the main screen style button to show similar styles. So right now I have one of our folky bluegrass styles loaded and maybe I want to easily find similar styles. And voila, the style picker opens with all the right filters added. And now I could click on these to sample them. We've added over 7,000 more song titles, including requests from users. So there are now over 21,000 titles in the list. There are new options for filtering by feel. You've always been able to filter by even sixteenths, even eighths, swing sixteenths, or swing eighths, but now there are groupings, even eighths or sixteenths, or sixteenths, even sixteenths or swing sixteenths. So right now, if I filter by even sixteenths, there's just over 2,500 items in the list. If I filter by even eighths, there's just under 2,800 items in the list. But if I filter by even eighths or sixteenths, there are now 5,382 items in the list. There are improvements to the Audio Chord Wizard. The Audio Chord Wizard allows you to take any audio file, such as an MP3 of your favorite song, and configure out the chords to the song a great tool for learning as well as for music production. And the feature now is more accurate than our previous versions and there are new presets that can help you get the best results possible. I'm going to open an MP3. It's the old folk song Down by the Sally Gardens. You can access this file as well in the main Band in a Box directory 
under Documentation, Tutorials, Tutorial BB 2021. I'm going to press the ACW button to open that feature. Now this file is just a single vocal part being accompanied by a guitarist. It was not recorded to a click track, but I'll create a tempo map of the song using the ACW features, and then I'll get ACW to figure out the chords for me. The best way to start is to listen to the first little bit of the song, and then determine where the first couple of bar lines are, and add markers indicating those bar lines by typing L. And I'll turn on auto marking. And from the two bars I entered in, it's extrapolated the rest. Just looking at it though, it appears to start to get a little out of sync as the file progresses. As I said, this wasn't recorded to a click, so it's possible the musician sped up or slowed down a little bit through the course of the song. But I can play the file, and as it's playing, I can move around just a few of these bar lines, and when I do, the rest will adjust accordingly. So I'll be able to get an accurate tempo map of this file with very little effort. Incidentally, the new feature that allows zooming to the cursor rather than the mouse, combined with the zooming that centers the file, makes this process a lot easier as well. And that's the whole thing. Now previously the only option now would be to just analyze, but now there are options. For starters, you can specify the song key, and the key of the song is A. If the song was known to be out of tune, you could select this. That wouldn't make it so that you would then afterwards hear it in tune, but what it would do is internally do some tuning that would yield better results. One possible reason for out-of-tune recordings might be if it were an older recording that was done to tape and the tape deteriorated and stretched causing a slight pitch shift before it was converted to digital. This one, however, is in tune, so I don't need to select that. Another new option is that you could specify that all chords had to be at least one bar. If you knew that your song didn't change chords more frequently than that, this would also yield better results. And there are also chord presets. There are options for only 1, 4, and 5 chords. If it's a very simple folk tune or very basic rock and roll, these might be suitable. There are also options for blues, and then options that limit to only allow certain chords, like triads plus dominant seventh chords, or slash chords allowed. For this one, I do want to limit it to triads. Even though some chords are technically played as minor sevenths on the guitar, I'd like it to be a basic chart but it's certainly playing more than just one, four, and five. So for this, diatonic triads is the best option. And I'll press OK, Get Chords. And I'll see how well it did. Bars one to four are perfect. There are some missing chords starting around bar 5, so I'll listen and make a few little changes. So that's done, and it did a great job finding the chords, and just required a few little touch-ups. I'm now going to save this song, and I'm going to use this whole file in the next part of my video, which is going to focus on the new features in the Band in a Box DAW plugin. The DAW plugin is included with any purchase of Band in a Box and allows you to use many of the great features of Band in a Box right in your favorite DAW, such as Cakewalk, Reaper, Pro Tools, Personas, and many more. Now, the main point of the plugin is, of course, to generate backing tracks. 
and I will of course be demonstrating this along with the great new features in the plugin. But the plugin has great uses even without generating tracks. It's becoming more and more common for people to record remotely. For example, if you're a bass player, someone might send you just a mix of a guitar and a vocal part and ask you to record a bass part to go along with it. And what they'll be expecting back is just an audio file of your bass part alone, but one that's perfectly lined up with the tracks they sent you, which they could then just drop into their own DAW and have it be perfectly synced up. And the Band in a Box main program used in conjunction with the DAW plugin provides excellent tools to help with this kind of recording. In the previous video, we saw just such an example of a song like this, Down by the Sally Gardens, was just vocals and guitar, it wasn't recorded to a click track, and that's exactly the type of thing someone might send you and say, hey, can you add a bass part to this for me? Well, after I went through that process, I of course saved the Band in a Box song file and can open it here in the plugin in Reaper. Now, right away, there are some new features that I'm very excited about. In addition to the view from the previous versions of the plugin, tracks and chords, we also have two new views, track table and chord sheet. I really love this because for me, occasionally I want to be able to access both of them at the same time, but mostly I'm either working on tracks or I'm working on or viewing chords. For me, it's rarely both. In the chord sheet, we can see that there are tempo changes at every bar in the file. And I'm gonna want that to also be the case in the DAW. There's another new feature that allows you to drag a MIDI file that just contains a tempo map into the DAW, where the tempo can be imported into the session. And it can also contain markers indicating the chords, as well as options for other items as well. It's kind of a hidden feature, so you need to know how to do it, and that's to hold Shift and drag from the main chord chart into the DAW. I'll import the MIDI map, but I don't want to import the markers because in Reaper, the markers will actually display right in the MIDI file, and I find that more useful. And here it's given me the chords for the file, and it's put in a count in, which is great for me because I need to know exactly when to start, but I don't want the metronome on for the whole recording because I'd prefer to just be playing along with the guitar and vocals. That MIDI file is customizable in preferences, with options for an entire click track, not just the count-in, and even block chords in the MIDI file. But the settings I used here are perfect for what I need. Although I do need to put a synth on that track so I actually hear the count-in. I'm now going to go to the track table. And like I said, right now I'm not going to generate any backing tracks. I will get to that, I promise. But for now I'm simply going to use Band in a Box as a chord chart for my own recording. But of course I need the WAV file that's associated with the Band in a Box file. I'll play a little bit. And you can see that the chords in that MIDI file are displaying correctly in sync with the audio. And I'm almost ready to record. I've got two mics set up for recording my bass, one that's positioned at the sound hole, the other that's recording at the fretboard. So I need to set up two new tracks. One recording input one, and the other recording input two. I'll label the tracks. Acoustic bass, sound hole. And acoustic bass, fretboard. I'll now put the view back to chord sheet. I'll arm the tracks to record, and I'll start recording. So now one final thing, when you open audio in Band in a Box and start to use the audio chord wizard, Band in a Box pads the beginning of the file so that it matches the count in. 
This is great for here and made the track line up with the grid both in Band in a Box and Reaper. But the producer is probably going to want my bass parts to line up with the actual file he sent me. That's easy enough to do now. I can just bring that original MP3 into here. Then I can slide it around so that it matches. And now I know that when I render out these two bass stems for the producer, the starting point should be here. So now I'm going to generate some tracks to also use in here. First of all, I'm going to name the song here. And I'm going to go to the track table. And rather than picking a style, I'd like to find some real tracks and real drums a la carte that might be cool in this song. I'd like to experiment with this being a bit of a folk electronic hybrid, so there are some new hip-hop minimal real drums that I'd like to try out. But also I'd like to add to the folky side of the song, so there are new cajon real drums. With the hip-hop minimal electronic drum style, there were also accompanying reel tracks, so I'd like to add a synth pad as well. And there are new vibes reel tracks available. In the past we've had jazz vibes, but never had straight ahead pop vibes. So these are extremely useful new reel tracks. Before I generate, I'm going to want the file names here to be more user-friendly than the file names we've had in the past. So I'm going to go into Preferences Rendering Simplify File Names. Now there's a new option to have the plugin generate all ungenerated tracks. Now currently I don't want to do that because I don't want to generate the style tracks. But if, for example, you had some tracks generated and some not, this would only regenerate the ungenerated ones. But what I want now is all extra tracks. And another new feature is faster rendering. And the generation of all those tracks took just under 30 seconds. And now I can drag all of these tracks into the DAW, where I can play them now and mix them together. And there are other exciting new features in the DAW plugin. You can now change audio output channels for an audio track using the plus button on the track table. And you can do the same for MIDI channels. The copy paste to text feature that we saw earlier in the video means that you can now copy chords back and forth between the plugin and the main program. For example, I'll highlight all of this and use Control C to copy it. And then in Banana Box, I'll go paste special from clipboard text. And the reverse is true. I'll go Control C to copy in Band in a Box, and Control V to paste in the plugin. You can also copy whole songs. If we're in this dialog and I select whole song and copy that to the clipboard, then if I go Control Shift V in the plugin, not only the chords, but the entire song has been copied here. The plugin can now display two chord types at once in the chord sheet. For example, you could have standard notation and Nashville notation at the same time. There are new options in the preferences. You can now set the action to perform when starting a new session. For example, you can have it start with the most recent style, or the default style, or you can select a style. You can also pick your own default style that you want. There are also new options for highlighting bars from the DAW. Never, always, or only during playback, so it won't highlight the bars when you're just doing editing in the DAW. And there are new options to render flat, dry, and center, meaning that the tracks that you'll then drag into the DAW are in a state exactly like they would be if you just recorded them directly into the DAW. We hope you enjoy all of the amazing new features in Banana Box 2021 for Windows and the Banana Box DAW plugin. Thanks for watching and have fun!